Hi everybody, this is Angela Sasser of Angelic Shade Studio, and today I want to talk to you about matting your artwork. I want you to go from unmatted artwork like this to this. Next, you'll need a good area to have all of your matting equipment in. This is my area. It's in a really dark basement <laughs> with one light, <laughs> but it's better than nothing. I have two tables. They're just cheap plastic tables you can get at Sam's or Walmart. And uh, what we have here is the main table with all the equipment on it. There's my Logan compact mat cutter. That's good if you move around a lot and you can't afford the really big table mounted ones. It works just the same with a few minor differences, but we'll get to those later. I like to have my laptop set up nearby for music and for communicating. This is uh, the second table with all the mat board laid on to on it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, just in piles. There is a scrap box. You never throw away big pieces because you never know when you can use them. And uh, I like to use these leftover map pieces for mailing cards or just to back things in the mail so you don't have to go and buy any. So I'm cheap like that. Then this is just the trash can. Throw away the small pieces that you can't really use for anything. So good to have those con containers nearby. Uh, here on the floor we've got a mat that's just... Uh, uh, the kind of mat you get for tool shops and believe it or not that keeps you from getting sore feet when you've been standing for as long as you can stand when you uh, have a ton to mat so that's good to have on the floor in front of your matting area Now let me introduce you to the tools of mat cutting. Here we have the Logan Compact Mat Cutter. You can get these at nearly any hobby store. I got mine from Hobby Lobby. This is the guide rail for the mat cutter. Notice it says read from this side. And that's important for later. I'll show you how that works. This is a slip mat. For when you're bevel cutting, it's just a spare piece of mat board that's something you place underneath your mat while you're cutting it so it doesn't wiggle around. Especially when you're bevel cutting, the mat tends to wiggle, so you want to keep that under it at all times when you're doing bevel cutting. Here are the two heads that come with the mat cutter. This is for cutting straight lines, and this one's for cutting bevel edges. Here we have a self-healing mat that just protects your, your table surface from getting messed up. You don't want any cuts in your table surface, so you want to bear down on this instead of your table. I like to keep a little notebook nearby as well because uh, sometimes I'll run out of certain colors and if I wait till later uh, I'll never remember the colors, so I like to keep this nearby to write down when I run out of supplies. Very handy. Here we have a custom fit blister guard, also known as a band-aid. Believe you me that you will need that on your finger because when you are pushing this little bevel cutter along, after about eight times you'll start getting a blister. So you want to just have that there for extra cushion. Next we have an eraser. And I like the white plastic erasers for erasing measurement marks because they're nice and soft. They're not going to tear up your mat board. Same thing goes for the kneaded eraser. It's nice and marshmallowy and it's not going to it's not abrasive, so it won't tear up your mat board if you need to erase something from it for some reason, like stray pencil marks or light spots. 
Just a regular old mechanical pencil for making marks. Pencil sharpener. This is a white chalk pencil for when you need to make measurement marks on dark mat board. So you can actually see what you're doing. This is my super heavy duty X-Acto blade. That's good for doing precision cutting. Now this is actually a nail file from a beauty shop and it has various bits of fine sandpaper on it. And what I use this for is uh, if you get a ragged line or a ragged edge you can just brush this along the edge of the mat board and get rid of any of the frayed edges or little bits sticking up. Generally when you get those bits sticking up that means you need to <laughs> replace your blade with a a sharper one, it means your blade's getting dull. But if you don't want to redo it, you can always uh, sand it down. This is the extra blade, so always keep those handy. I keep several rulers for different duties. This is a 24 inch ruler. This is a clear ruler, which is good for when you actually need to see underneath your ruler so you can uh, judge how it's going to affect your picture underneath. This is a T-square. Very important for keeping right angle corners when you're making cuts. And just a pair of scissors if I need to cut out anything from that board. Alright, we've got all our tools. We're ready to start cutting some mats. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll be showing you basic techniques for cutting a mat.